Hey y'all, it's Ryan, and today is my birthday, so as a little treat to myself, I chose to highlight one of my favorite papers, and it just continues to inspire me, and it's from my advisor's postdoctoral advisor, Dr. Janice Kikol Glazer, and I'm recording this on, on my birthday weekend, just a few weeks before the 2020 election, so honestly, I need to remind myself about all of this incredibly cool work to stay motivated. And this paper has everything. So this is also your reminder that early voting has started and to go ahead and get out to the polls or send in your ballot so that your vote and voice can be heard and counted. Okay, back to the science, which we need funding to do. This paper was published in 2005 and we read it early in my grad school time. And it was one of those papers that just gets me so excited about how cool sort of relationship science is and the combination of really studying psychology and immunology and the rigor of their methods. This to me is some of the most fascinating, incredible research. So I'm really excited to share it with you today. So we know humans are super social creatures, right? And that's part of why we study social relationships and especially close relationships. And of the relationships that we have in older adulthood, marriage or a long-term partnership is often the main relationship for adults. And broadly speaking, there are visible associations between being married and one's overall health. And I know that sounds super annoying, right? I, that was kind of my first thought when reading about how close relationships and especially marriage um, affect our health but the science is much cooler than the initial statement, okay? So part of the idea is that being in a long-term, loving, supportive relationship is both psychologically and physiologically beneficial for a lot of reasons. And I'm not gonna describe attachment theory or attachment orientations or how physiological co-regulation between spouses occurs here, but I will in future videos because this is some of my favorite work and it absolutely applies to the results you'll see. So anyway, people in relationships on a broad scale tend to have better health than people not in relationships. But being in a bad marriage can be really bad for our health, right? So again, there's so much cool work that I don't have time to go into yet, but think about what happens when you're in a bad relationship with someone who you live with, who's supposed to be super trustworthy, someone that you can lean on when you're struggling, right? And when there's greater hostility and conflict in a marriage, that means that your blood pressure is probably higher when you're with them. You have elevated epinephrine and norepinephrine during conflict and higher cortisol levels for the rest of the day after that conflict. So all of these are markers that your body is physiologically activated and not really in a helpful way from the stress of those hostile interactions that are part of your daily life with your partner. So all of this work had been done before Dr. Kiko Glazer and her team asked the question of whether people in more hostile marriages actually heal slower when wounded than people in less hostile marriages. And you might be wondering why they're asking about wound healing specifically. But cytokines, which we've talked a lot about on my channel in, in this field in general, are part of the wound healing process. But they're slightly different than the kind of cytokines I've talked about before, with the exception of one video about emotion regulation and the common cold. So this is because when we're wounded, that early local production of pro-inflammatory cytokines helps to enhance the healing process by acting as chemoattractants for phagocytes and other cells to migrate to the specific wound site. So this is very different than systemic or serum cytokines that are produced throughout your body and can represent a maladaptive response that's associated with lots of age-related diseases. And this is part of why it's a little silly to market health products as anti-inflammatory because inflammation and pro-inflammatory cytokines are essential for wound healing and other survival things. So one way to think about it is that stress affects both local and systemic inflammation, but in different ways. Stress slows local pro-inflammatory cytokine production at wound sites, but promotes greater systemic production of pro-inflammatory cytokines. And so when I say systemic production, I mean production throughout your entire body. Everything about this paper is so cool, but I love the rigor of their methods. So 42 couples came into their clinical research center at two different times for 24 hours each. At the beginning of each visit, couples had a standardized breakfast before being given a suction blister wound, which is an established way to study local inflammatory responses. And then they were video recorded during an interaction with their spouse in either a structured social support interaction or a conflict interaction. And the researchers assessed local pro-inflammatory cytokines at the wound site and also systemic cytokine production. So then their blister sites were monitored daily after to determine how quickly healing happened. Now, another reason the study is so badass because they didn't just rely on self-reports of how hostile the participants thought their marriage was. No. 
They actually had the couples fight with cameras facing each person and then had another researcher code the communication and behaviors exhibited by each person in the dyad or the couple. And what they found overall was that wounds healed slower in the time following the conflict interaction compared to the social support interaction. And critically, people in high hostile marriages healed a whole day slower on average than people in low hostile marriages. So that means that couples in hostile marriages healed at 60% the rate of couples in low hostile marriages. And this was true after both the social support interaction and the conflict interaction, which is really cool because they basically did the study twice in two different contexts. So this is obviously amazing work, but especially when you consider that probably a big critique that the authors would get when proposing this kind of work was, are you really gonna be able to get couples to fight in the lab? So it turns out that people go back to their typical communication patterns pretty quickly, but the fights are probably more negative and longer at home, right? And so for some people, these results might actually be underestimating the impact of hostile behaviors during marital conflicts. Overall, these findings help us close in on the pathways through which our closest relationships affect our health. So the takeaway here is that wound healing is affected by the short-term stress of conflict and even the hostile behaviors within that conflict. All right, y'all, that's all for today. Thanks for stopping by and please remember to click like or subscribe for more content like this.